and Coulomb's law is the equation that measures the attraction between forces. The attraction, I guess, or repulsion, right? Between charges, um, and right, so measures the attraction. Right, so we're talking about this equation that talks about the force between charges, and so electrons are attracted to the nucleus of atom because of what we call charge attraction. Right, in other words the attraction between two charges. We measure the amount of uh, charge, right? right? In other words, that if we want to know how much charge something has, we use a unit called a Coulomb, and it's named for this guy below, Charles Coulomb, who is was a French physicist who did experiments with charge attraction. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be doing math today. And uh, that causes some issues because a lot of you guys, when you see numbers, uh, start glazing over pretty quickly. But just uh, we're really working on the proportions. In other words, if something goes up, does that make the force go up or down? Uh, that's really what we're dealing with here. So when we charge an object, uh, electrons, right? We know that electrons move onto the object if it becomes negatively charged, or move off of the object if it be becomes positively charged. But protons never move. And that's because they're stuck in the nucleus, right? So we know how to charge something using electrons. But measuring the charge, we haven't talked about. A Coulomb of charge is actually a pretty huge charge. It's the charge on 6.241 times 10 to the 18th protons, or 6.241 times 10 to the 8th electrons, have a charge of negative one Coulomb, right? The only difference between the charge on protons and the charge on electrons is that one is negative. But you can see it takes a lot of electrons to make a, char a Coulomb of charge. Um, so what's the charge on just one electron? All right, well, if 6.4, uh, oops, if 6.241 uh, times 10 to the 18th electrons is equal to one Coulomb, then if we divide both sides by 6.241 times 10 to the 18th, then we'll get the charge on just one electron. So we'll get one electron on this side. And the question is, what number do we get over here? Well, when we're punching this into a calculator, Let's see if we can do this. Um, let's see if I have my calculator here. All right. When we're punching this into a calculator, uh, we're going to end up dividing 1 divided by 6.241. And then you're looking for this EE button. On a handheld calculator, there's always some sort of EE. On the little Casios that we use with the solar power, it's the second x to the negative one button, uh, wherever that is on here. But it's there's a little ee written over the button, and you get there by second x to the negative one. Here, there's just one right on the screen. And when we do that, right, we get a power of ten. Right, this stands for ten to the power of. Uh, usually, it's a capital e. A lowercase e is usually the natural log. But in this case, here we go. And then all we have to do is type in eighteen. Right, and now we have our answer. Okay, so entering scientific notation on a calculator, you're always looking for that EE button to help you enter the scientific notation. And now here's our big answer, and it's a long decimal followed by e to the negative 19th. So our answer is going to be uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Okay, and if you look back at that, right, 
1.6. I really don't care about all of this. So I'm going to round times 10 to the power of negative 19. And that's how we would write that. Okay. So let's go back to that. And that would be coulombs. All right, coulombs of charge. So an electron really has a tiny, tiny charge. Uh, it's just 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So when we're, we were playing with the van der Graaff and we were getting sparks, we're talking about you know, millions of electrons uh, at one time because it takes a fairly large uh, number of electrons to equal any substantial charge. Anyway, Coulomb's law is written over here. It's this mathy equation. Uh, F equals K, Q1, Q2 over D squared, right? And this should look kind of familiar, right? Back when we did gravity, back when we did gravity, we said that the force of gravity was equal to G times M1, M2 over D squared, okay? And so we've dealt with an equation that looks pretty much like this, and this is going to work the same way. F, you'll recall, stands for force, the push or the pull. Q, in this case, stands for charge. I don't know why it would stand for charge. Maybe they were thinking it stands for, like, maybe charge used to be spelled this way. I don't know. Um, but it doesn't stand for that now, and now it stands for charge. Um, and it's a little awkward, but these are two charges. And D stands for distance. But what's in the equation, should be pointed out, is distance squared. And that's going to be a big topic today. Like gravity, and, right? So we have distance squared in the denominator, right? And so we're going to call this an inverse square law. Inverse square. And that's going to be the hard part about changing the distance in this equation, that you're going to have to remember that it's both in the denominator, it, when distance goes up, the force goes down and it's squared. That means the force goes uh, down when the square of the distance goes up. Right? And so since the force goes down when the distance goes up, that's inverse, right? But because it's squared, it's an inverse square law. Now, we're going to take this, this is going to be our test example, okay? So we're going to compare everything to here. So this is like our, our, um, our example. And we're going to compare everything to it, okay? So, oops, and there we go doing that again. Um, here's our example. And so we're going to compare each of these other ones back to this one. Okay. So be patient with us. Because if you look at these two examples, you can see that all we're doing here, see this eight, this charge is the same, right? This uh, distance is the same. And this charge has gone up by a factor of two. So in this case, right, it's Q2 was multiplied by two, right? That's the only difference. We double one of the charges, okay? All right, so that means that basically we took this equation, F equals K Q1 Q2 over D squared, and all we did was we multiplied one of those things in the numerator times two. Well, since it's in the numerator, right, if we multiply it times two, then we also multiply the force times two. And so what happens is we get two times the original F uh, equals the new F, right? And so this, right, two times this original F will equal this new F. And so we get uh, 2.3 Newtons, okay? because 2 times 1.5 is 2.3. And so that's how we're going to play with this, the, this equation. We're not going to necessarily substitute everything in. We're simply going to see how one of the factors in the equation changes. Okay. So let's take a look at the second one. This time what we're going to do 
is we're going to triple the distance. Triple the distance. And again, if you look at this, if we look back here, right, let me erase some of this, right? right. In this case, the uh, initial charge right here is the same. The initial charge here is the same, right? But what's changed is this distance, right? It becomes 1.5, okay? And that means that what we did was we multiplied uh, the distance times three, okay? So we multiplied the distance times three. But the trouble here is that distance times three is not the same as telling us about d squared. So that means that d squared has been multiplied by 3 squared. And that means d squared times 9. Because it's, right? And because it's in the denominator, right, we have f times k, q1, q2, over d squared. And so we're going to multiply this bottom part by 9. But f is in the numerator. Oops, sorry, that was f equals. f equals. Uh, we're multiplying the denominator here by 9. But f is in the numerator, which means that f is being multiplied by 1 over 9. And so that means that we say uh, 1 ninth times f equals our new force. Yeah. In other words, we're dividing by a bigger number. And so now we just take this f here and we multiply by 1 ninth and so 1 uh, ninth times 1.15 right equals our new force and 9 goes into uh, 1.15 point 1 uh, 3 if you round it times and you can check this out on yield calculator by simply saying 1.15 divided by 9, right? And you get what rounds to 0.13. Or if you don't like it doing that way, you can say 1 divided by 9 equals, and then multiply it times 1.15. And you can see we get the same answer. Okay. All right, now let me erase some of this junk. And let's take a look at another of these. Okay. So let's look at another example. So what happens if we make one of the charges negative? Well, in this case, if we make one of the charges negative, we can go back to the original, but you can see that the uh, if we make one of the charges, I didn't actually write it on here. Oh, bad. So let's actually write it on here. So that would mean I'd say took a negative sign and simply put it on this charge. So in this case, we started out with F equals K, Q1, Q2, over D squared, right? And all we're doing is we're going to say, we're going to multiply this times negative 1. Well, again, if we change the sign of the one of the charges, now we say the, the, it's going to make this overall thing negative, right? It used to be positive times positive. Now it's positive times negative. And so what we're going to get is negative 1 times the original force. And so we get negative 1.15 newtons. So what does that actually mean? Well, we know that positive, time, uh, that positive charges attract negative charges. And so what this tells us is that when the force is negative, That means that it is an attraction. Right? Up here, where we have a positive force, that means that we have repulsion. And we can see that just from Coulomb's law. Right? In other words, if we change from a positive force to a negative force, we change from an uh, a repulsion to an attraction. 
So what if both forces, or both charges were negative? Well, let's put a negative sign in front of both. Well, in that case, you get F equals K, Q1, Q2, over D squared. And you're multiplying this times negative 1. And you're multiplying this times negative 1. So instead of Q1 times Q2, you have negative Q1 times negative Q2. Well, that's still going to be a positive, right, Q1, Q2, because the two negative signs cancel out. And so you'll be back to having 1.15 newtons. And so that's going to be a positive force, and it's going to be repulsive again. Right? And that's good because we know that like charges repel. It's not so much that uh, negative charges repel. It's negative uh, charges repel other negatives, right? And negative times negative gives us a positive answer, right? So anytime we have opposite charges, we get attraction because we end up with a negative force. When we have like charges, either positive times positive or negative times negative, we get a repulsive force. And we get a negative, uh, we get a positive force. When the sign of the force in Coulomb's law is positive, the object uh, repels. And when the, the force is negative, then the objects attract. Okay. The objects repel. Anyway, we get the idea. All right. Now, the last part of this, are, there are four questions that go back to the John Travoltage demo that we did last week. And you should be able to answer these, right? Um, because what's changing as he scuffed more and more, right, was that he had more charge, right? Effectively, Q got bigger. What happened with the force when John, uh, between John's finger and the electrons in the doorknob as he moved his finger closer? And so that would mean less distance. And so D got smaller. Right? And now here, if he doubled the distance, how much more charge would he have to build up right, to get the same spark? And so in this case, we're saying D times 2 is the same as Q times what? All right, so what multiplying Q times what number will give you the same effect as multiplying D times 2? But don't forget, the equation has D squared in it. And lastly, if John has 20 charges on him, right, at 40 centimeters and gets a spark, what's going to happen when he holds his hand at 20 centimeters? How much charge will he need then? And again, 40 and 20, 20 is half of 40. And so that would be D times 1 half is the same as Q times what? And again, D is squared, so don't forget that. All right, so that should help you answer those four questions. And you can do that on Cami, and then you can email me that sheet for a homework check. So just these four questions.